ಸಂದೇಶ ಬರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ರಶ್ಕಿದ್ ಹೇಳ್ ಮತ್ತ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ರೊಡ್ರಿಗಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಜರ್ಸ್ ಬೀತ್ ಮೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಕ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ಸ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಬಿ ಐಸೋಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರಾಪ್ ರೂಫ್ ಟಾಪ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಐಸೋಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ the families and friends of such people possibly are worrying about them and the media can gather information about them and relay them to the public and you see very often there is a media there is a communication uh, breakdown during disasters such as typhoons storms floods etc so the media can help a lot by broadcasting information about people who need to be rescued or who need to be given assistance number 5 facilitate communication among affected people and their relatives friends families in other parts of the country or the world during ma- major disasters communication lines between the, the disaster area and other parts of the country are likely to break down the media can render an essential service by facilitating communication among survivors and their families number 6 report on the needs of survivors government and aid groups might overlook certain groups of survivors the media should make sure that all groups are given aid the media can, can also help obtain aid from local or international organizations number 7 stress the need for application of minimum standards the UNCHR and the international aid community have developed international standards on disaster relief the standards are known as sphere the humanitarian character no sorry charter and minimum standards in disaster response sphere gives guidelines on the minimum needs of disaster relief survivors in terms of water sanitation shelter flood uh, food environmental health and other aspects the media have to monitor and report whether the agencies are following these standards in giving relief and responding to emergencies number 8 communicate potential secondary risks to minimize further disaster or damage after a disaster secondary hazards are likely to occur such as fires landslides or fires of our right after let's say for instance an earthquake landslides or tsunamis right after a strong typhoon hits a coastal area or after an earthquake flash floods and landslides after typhoons and electrocution or epidemics after floods personally i almost it's a good thing i was not at home when on the spot because i think uh, meralco at the time failed to cut off power to our area and the flood reached up to uh, my wish it was a good thing i was uh, at the time i was uh, delivering a lecture on grammar at the office of the financial times of london in makati so i was not at home and neither was my wife because she was there to serve as my driver oh well she's a good driver she does not ask for extra compensation but the thing is uh, i'm a very good employer because i let my driver sleep with me <laughs> after all she's my wife the focus um, after a disaster the focus after a disaster is on rehabilitation and reconstruction during this phase it is important to integrate disaster risk reduction into the process now the media can after the disaster number one appeal for aid from all parties the national provincial and local agencies may not have enough resources to respond to the needs of rehabilitation and reconstruction the media can help inform local and international agencies about the needs of disaster areas number 2 report rehabilitation and reconstruction plans 
the media can inform all stakeholders about the rehabilitation and reconstruction plans of the government, United Nations, and NGOs. The media can facilitate discussion of the plans to ensure that the needs of survivors are truly addressed. Number three, encourage the participation of survivors in the recovery program. The media can conduct surveys among disaster survivors and solicit their opinion on how recovery plans can better meet the needs of the community. And number four, exert influence to integrate risk reduction and prevention. The media can contribute to sustainable social development by providing information which highlight, promote, and advocate the need for the integration of risk reduction considerations into rehabilitation and reconstruction. Now, uh, let us uh, discuss some ethical guidelines for the media in disaster reporting. The media at all times have to be ethical. They have to know the difference between right and wrong behavior and always do what is right. And here are some key principles. Number one, be truthful. That's basic. You have to be truthful in your reporting. Do not spread distorted, biased, and opinionated information. Avoid exaggeration as it can lead to racial, religious, or political conflicts that can result in violence. Number two, serve the public interest. Good media practice should be free of obligation to any interest other than the public's right to know. Number three, take a humanitarian approach. Maintain a decent and sympathetic attitude while reporting crimes, accidents, and disasters. The use of bad language, obscene or shocking pictures should be avoided. I think in this regard, sometimes the television, television is guilty. They use uh, shocking pictures, but sometimes these cannot be avoided because uh, they cannot edit what they're uh, covering at the time, whereas uh, the print medium, the print media, can edit their stories. That's the advantage of the print media. Number four, respect privacy. Respect for privacy, however, should not be an obstacle to holding government officials and other individuals or entities accountable for their action. Number five, maintain your integrity. Refuse gifts, favors, fees, free travel, <coughs> and special treatment, and shun secondary jobs, public office, political involvement, and service in community organizations if they compromise journalistic integrity. But in some cases, for instance, uh, you have to accept the offer of the Philippine Air Force if it's going to fly a helicopter to see what damage is being caused by a flood in a certain area. But uh, try to offer compensation. Ask the Philippine Air Force how much did we, should we pay you for, for uh, riding aboard the helicopter. In other words, uh, pay your money. <coughs> Number six, honor your sources. Media people owe a responsibility to their sources. They have to maintain the confidentiality of sensitive information and avoid any action that would compromise the safety and security of their sources. And number seven, be accountable for your writing. Admit your mistakes and correct them promptly. For instance, you reported that 10 people were killed in a typhoon, and it turns out that only eight were killed. Immediately correct the figure in the next day's uh, issue, or if you're in the broadcast media, in the next uh, broadcast. Test the accuracy of information from all sources and exercise care to avoid inadvertent error. Uh, in, my in my prepared presentation, I was uh, going to talk on reporting on violence against women, but I noticed that 
had gone over the time. Well, as nations and societies develop and become more and more complicated and complex, their dependence on mass media for information increases. Over the years, the media have taken on more and more functions and responsibilities. And one of these involve, involves disaster risk management, where the media plays a key role in saving lives and mitigating the harmful and destructive effects of disasters and other emergencies. As media practitioners, we have to be conscious always of our responsibilities and of the ethical rules that guide our actions so that we can truly serve the interest of the public to which we owe our primary loyalty. Thank you. Thank you so much.